In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your very own auto image generator using AI. If you have any questions, drop them below. I tend to reply within a few minutes to a couple of hours, and I'll also leave all the links I use inside the video in the description and comments. So here I am on one of my websites, and every single time a new image is generated, it will be automatically sent to my website. So if I go ahead and refresh this page, because it's been running since I started recording, I should have a bunch of new images here. So I'll do refresh. And as you see, I have a bunch of new images from cars or co cool concept phones or even Bitcoin. These images are really cool, high quality stock images that you can use in any of your ventures. In fact, if you wanted to sell the images, you can because you have full rights on them. Also, if you want to download any of these images from this website, I'll leave a link to this website so you can download any of these images if you like the look of them. In order to make this possible, we're going to be using a tool called Pably. Now, if you've never heard of Pably, I'll leave a link below. It is a paid tool. You do have some free flexibility with it. And I'll also leave an amazing discount in the description below. So make sure to check that out. Pably is a no code solution tool, meaning you can connect lots of third party applications to it and create your very own automations without knowing any code whatsoever. This is what we're going to use to start generating our images. So once you're inside your Pably account, go to create workflow. We're going to name this image generator two, but you can name it whatever you want. Once you're inside, the first thing that we're going to do is select the schedule icon and we want to set a running time for this. Now this depends on how many credits you have, but if you want to quickly populate something or get a ton of different images, you can do so by setting this to one and then this will run every one minute. I'm just gonna leave it at 15, but it's completely up to you. You can also change the interval, selecting these different options. Go ahead and save that and now that's a success. So every 15 minutes, this will run. Now, depending on what you're trying to achieve will dictate what sort of prompts we put in. The next step is we're going to do ChatGPT. And then for the action, we're going to do Ask ChatGPT and we're going to connect our account. The model is going to be GPT-4. And then for the prompt, go ahead and enter your own prompt. If you want this prompt, I'll leave a link below on how you can download all of my favorite prompts that get you results just like this. So once you entered your prompt, we're going to do save and test result. Now, because this is actually a series of different prompts inside this one area, what I'm actually asking ChatGPT to do is select one of these prompts, but I'm actually telling it to replace the objects in the prompt with a trending search on Google for this week. So we can always stay relevant with things that people are actually searching for. In this scenario, it's going to be creating a 3D rendering of the metaverse with bright colors and an abstract style. We're now going to select the next action. And for this, we're going to be typing in number formatter. Then we're going to do action and we'll type in spreadsheet formulas, connect. And for the formula, we're gonna go ahead and paste in this formula here. Basically what this is doing is it's going to be randomly selecting whether or not we want the image to be natural or vivid because we need to select one of these prompts to enter into the image generator, which will make more sense shortly. We'll do save and test request. And now it's selected vivid. For the next step, we're going to go ahead and type in open AI. For the event, we're going to select generate image with Dolly E3. We're going to connect our account. The model, we're going to go with Dolly E3. For the prompt, we're going to select from step two, the output that it generated for us, which was the rendering of the metaverse. The number of images we're going to generate is one. The size is completely up to you, but I'm going to go with 1792. The quality I'm going to leave as standard. And then for the style, I'm going to select step three. And then the result for this instance, it's vivid, but it will switch between vivid and natural. Then we'll do save and test result. And if we've done everything correctly, it should now be generating that image for us. It's now finished. So let's have a look at the image, which is this URL here. We're just going to go to the link and look how cool that image is. And again, you can get all of these prompts in the link in the description below ready for you to download. Now that we have the image, the next step is we're going to be using OpenAI's vision to read the image because we want it to create a in detail description of the image. So we're going to select the OpenAI option 
go to event and we're going to select custom API request. We'll do connect and for the request method, we're going to change this to post the API endpoint. We're going to paste that in. We're going to select add headers and we're going to add two headers in. So the first label is this and the second label is this. We're then going to add in a value, which is this. And then in the second field, you want to add bearer space and then you want to grab your API key from OpenAI. Then in the data area, you want to to paste in the following code and again I'll leave this all in the links below for you and then where it says text this is where we change it to in as much detail as possible describe this image however you can change this one little section make sure it's in between the quotation marks but you can change this to any prompt you want but you want it to be something that's asking this specific bot to describe the image. Then where it says URL, you want to select in between the quotation mark, go to step four, and where you can see data URL, you want to add that in because that is the URL or the image that we generated. So now, as long as we've done everything correctly, we should get a detailed description of this image. So now if we scroll down and drag this open, we've actually got this whole long description of the image. Again, you don't need to do this this bit specifically. It's just if you want to be using the images and including auto descriptions with them all. Once you've done that, we're going to add another action step and we're going to type in ChatGPT. We're going to say ask ChatGPT and connect our account. And then for the prompt, I want a SEO friendly title. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to do this for me. And I'm going to ask ChatGPT to create a title from the description that we just, from step five that we created. And then we'll do save and test step. And there we have the description. So the next step is optional. I'm going to be using Dropbox, but you can use any other system that you have as long as it connects. So we're going to find a place to store these images. So we're going to add an action step and then we're going to type in Dropbox. For the action event, we're going to select upload file connect and now you want to upload the file URL. So we're going to select step four and then the URL option and then the file name I'm just going to select step six and then the message content because this is what was generated for us for the title. And then here you would add your folder path. So for example, the folder path for me would be because I'm uploading to Dropbox, we would start it with a slash. Then we're going to say work desktop. And just remember this is personal to me. You would need to find the path to where you want to upload it to. And if I've done everything correctly, this should now upload the file, rename the file name to our Dropbox folder. So it looks like everything was successful. Now we actually made a mistake. And as you see here, it has uploaded a file, but it's not uploaded the file the way we wanted it to. And the reason for that is because we've not put the extension in. So the way we do that is if we go back and where it says file name, we should put in dot and then the file extension. So if we now save and test request, that seems to have worked again. So we go back to Dropbox and now we see that image has been uploaded and that one was the incorrect one. But if we click on this, we can see the name is what our AI tool did for us. And we've got the image right here. And then the final thing to do if you're happy with everything is to turn this on and this will run without you. Now we can do a whole bunch of stuff once we've got the images and we can auto post them to our websites like what you can see me doing. We can take it one step further by creating full blown blogs about each image. So for example, if I click on this image, we have the title, we have the image, and then we've got a full blown SEO friendly blog. If I inspect the code, you can see we've got H3 tags and H2 tag and H1 tags and listicle and bold elements and all sorts, which is really cool because it means we get to start ranking for these images. So if you wanted to sell them or just gain traffic to your website, this is a fantastic way to do it. Another thing that you may not have noticed is the sizes of these images. See, what I've also done is these are the small versions of the images. So before they're uploaded to my website, they're actually compressed, so they're not so large, which is slowing down my site. For example, you can see this is the picture that we're talking about, and it's actually 
this picture is over 5 megabytes in size and the actual size of the image is considerably bigger than this one. You can also add watermarks to your images as well. There's a whole lot of stuff you can do and I encourage you to visit brainyautomations.com where I teach a ton of automations just like this and I also hold your virtual hand whilst you implement them. I'll set you on the right path so you can start automating and living a freer life knowing that your business is in good hands. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.